What's up guys, it's Keaton Cash, and I'm here to respond to a question I got in the new Mod Club chats forum. It's from a guy named Mark, and he says, Hey Keaton, nice to meet you. I'm opting for RFF. Despite all of my doubts and worries, I know exactly the procedure that I want done to the most specific details. I spent a lot of time thinking about it. At this point, all that's slowing me down is the abstract fear of making the wrong choice. I would love to hear about how or if you overcame those nerves pre-surgery. And this is a great question. I know everyone undergoing surgery typically deals with surgical fear. You know, when we're going through things that are more standard, like top surgery and histo and whatever, there's less options involved and there generally tends to be less risk of regret later on. Not to say that some of us won't struggle with that, but when it comes to fallow, I really hit a new high of pre-surgery nerves and concern that, you know, should I do this? Should I not? And even at the point that I made the firm decision to go forward and booked it with the surgeon and all the things, you're still, your mind, my mind was still just replaying it. And, you know, I would not categorize myself as particularly anxious. I think I'm kind of in the middle. I went on a journey, okay? My girlfriend at the time, you know, I had her giving me tarot card readings. I was getting life coaching. I was in therapy. I was talking to everyone and everyone. I was meditating. I was like soul searching. I was posting in the ALT groups all the time because I had lots of questions going out to the groups. So my big concern at the time, just to frame this a little bit, was about leg function post-surgery. I'm athletic. I I love just moving and I don't like anything that slows me down physically. I get really antsy about that. I was really concerned that I was going to screw up my leg in some kind of way where it really set me back permanently. And that's where the bulk of my fear was coming in. He doesn't talk about the bulk of his fear being in a particular place, but there's so many places it could go, right? So let's get into it. I was introduced to a concept that is weirdly simple, blew my mind a little bit. And the idea was that there isn't a wrong choice. There's only the choice you make. The choice you make is rooted in the understanding that every decision in life leads to its own unique set of experiences. This mindset shifts the focus from anxiety about making the perfect decision to embracing the journey that follows any choice. Now, each path is valid. You know, when you think about this, it, it kind of frees you from the thought of there being like a binary black and white, one is right, one is wrong. It gets all of that like off your shoulders and you start thinking about there's no right or wrong choice. There's only the choice you make, right? Can't you just like breathe easier when, when just thinking that, just say that to yourself and see if your shoulders relax. Embedded in that is, is actually my second point, which is that no matter which decision you make, you're going to have your own back. When we think about being fearful of making a wrong decision, what we're really afraid of, typically, is that if we make the wrong one, that we are going to beat ourselves up for that, right? Like we become a prisoner of ourselves. We become a prisoner of our own wrong decision and now we have to live in the body of that wrong decision. You know, there's no escaping the sort of mental aberration that can come along with that. But like, when someone does something to you, you can blame them. And you're the victim. Whether you want to be the victim or not, whatever. You're the victim. It was an outside circumstance. But when you do it to yourself, right, through making the wrong decision, there's no one to blame but yourself. And you just have to sit in that uncertainty and that, or that uncomfortability. And I think that's where so much of the fear of making the wrong decision comes from. Is like, am I about to ruin my body? Am I about to ruin my sexual function? Am I about to ruin, you know, the ability to, you know, enjoy sex? You know, so many things could be running through our minds, right? When it comes to this. But underneath those fears is really like, am I going to do this to myself with no one else to blame, only myself to blame? Like, in, in, a, in, your, in a personal, putting you in a personal hell, right? And so to kind of step outside of that, we have to think about like, can you imagine things going somewhat wrong and not berating yourself, not beating yourself up, not sinking into a deep depression where you hate yourself? Can you imagine yourself saying like, okay, like we made a decision, the decision has panned out in this way, it's not, the outcome we were hoping for, but it's the outcome we got. In that way, it's a little bit of a universal experience, right? Like we walk out our doors and, you know, things happen to us and 
you know, we made the decision to walk out the door. And in this case, it's like you're making the decision to lay down on that bed. And, and what happens when those surgeons start doing what they're going to do? But can you make that decision ahead of time to have your own back and say, like, we made the decision to lay down on that bed, to sign that waiver, you know, to put our intention for what we want out there, but we might not get exactly what we want in whatever capacity and can we make that decision ahead of time to not beat ourselves up? To say like, hey, you made the decision, you took the risk, you know, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for being brave enough to take the risk. I'm proud of you for being brave enough to go after the outcomes that you want. You know, we're facing some setbacks right now, but that's okay. We're resilient. We've come this far in life. We've you know, we've mitigated transition and all the things that go along with that. That's a hard, very unique journey in life to have to go through. We've gone through all that and here we are at this somewhat final juncture. Things might not, things didn't go as we wanted them to, but it's okay. Like, it's okay. We're going to work through this and we're going to make the best of it right? Like maybe your arm function is struggling a bit. Maybe you have some ongoing pain. Maybe you have a complication related to your urethra or, you know, who knows, right? There's so many things. There's so many little things that can go wrong. And you really have to make that decision and talk to yourself in those ways. You're going to know what you need to say to yourself. You're going to know ways that you can pat yourself on the back about where you've come through in life where you've shown yourself resiliency. You know, I, any trans man that exists, I know without a shadow of a doubt, have some resiliency. You have overcome shit. For many of us, we've come out of the closet in so many different capacities, so many different times, and yet other people that just come out of the closet once, you know, it's, it's life-changing. We have to do it multiple times. I could go on and on, you get it. So figure out how to talk to yourself about that in advance, you know, project forward into those complications, you know, Imagine there being some issue with your arm, your hand, your urethra if you're doing that, you know, your ball sack, your... and based on your other life experiences, anticipate how you can react and try to get out ahead of it and have those conversations with yourself in advance. And that's really what it looks like to have your own back is I'm a team with myself. We're do I I'm doing this with myself. I'm a team with myself and I'm not going to turn on myself. I'm not going to turn my back on myself and beat myself up and say, shit, you know, you shouldn't have done that. Everyone said you shouldn't have done that. They were right. I was wrong, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So that's another, that's the, that's kind of like the, the second big thing and like bringing it back for a minute to like this idea that there is no wrong choice. Like they're kind of connected. It's like to really appreciate the concept of there not being a wrong choice, you kind of have to get on board with this, like having your own back thing. Like there being no wrong choice is realizing really like there's no wrong choices. I mean, you know, in life, yeah, there's some wrong choices you could make. You could drink and drive. That was a wrong choice. You could, you know, intentionally hurt someone, you know, whatever. But outside of the obvious things, you know, a lot of times, you know, it's like, should I move to Los Angeles or should I move to New York? You know, should I take this job? Should I take that job? You know, these kinds of things that can really like get us like, whoa, uh, you know, it can be a little similar to surgery where it feels like there's a lot on the table, but at the end of the day, it's like, you're still going to be you no matter how it goes. Like you're still going to be you with yourself and you're going to make the best of it. You know, if you move to LA, you're still you with all your resources and all your experience, you're going to make the best of it. You know, if you go to New York, it's the same thing. You know, if you have surgery, if you don't. Now, when it comes down to like actually like having surgery or not having surgery, you know, the thing that propelled me and brought me some calm was really just imagining like not going through with it. You know, I would try to think about walking away from having the procedure, especially when you've gotten as close as you've gotten right now, right? You know exactly what you want. It doesn't sound like you've booked anything yet, but you're probably like really kind of on the edge of doing that. Once we've gotten so close to making the decision to turn around and say, you know what? No, forget it. That leaves us in a state where, again, you'd have to really have your own back even for that decision, right? Because the fact that you got so close and turned around and said, no, that decision is behind me. 
And not to say that that's impossible, but for me, it was a long process for me to get to the decision of having surgery. You know, I felt good about the fact that I didn't run right into it. I had been like, you know, started my transition, I don't know, 15 years before and had several surgeries and then got to phalloplasty after having a, a surgical break. Now, if I could have had phalloplasty the second I decided I was a trans guy and took my first tee shot, I probably would have done it. And I was really glad I didn't have that option when I first transitioned because I was very dick focused. And I was just like, I just want the dick. Just give me the dick. Like, my God. And I was like obsessing about the research back then. But because I couldn't get it back then, it forced me to like focus on other things like top surgery and so on. And I did all that. And I did get to a phase of equilibrium where I was like, I don't know if I'm ever going to do phalloplasty. And I genuinely didn't. But over time, you know, it started to like creep up on me of like feeling like I think this is actually like coming around again. And it's something I can't walk away from now. And so the decision for me to not do it. It was like equally weighted anxiety in either direction, to be honest. But I knew that doing it potentially was going to bring something new and better to my life, whereas not doing it was only going to bring, you know, I knew what that was like, right? It's like I knew what that life was of not doing it. And I knew that I wasn't satisfied enough and that I was still butting up against dysmorphia issues as it related to that. So I really couldn't reconcile just not doing it out of a fear of safety. It's very scary surgery to think about in so many respects, and it's completely normal to think about it a lot. I would find it abnormal to not think about it all the time when you're gearing up and heading for it. It's, it's just such a huge deal. I also want to talk about empowerment through ownership, which is related to the other subjects. But when you view decisions as neither right nor wrong, but simply the next step in your journey, you empower yourself to own that choice fully. And this ownership is really crucial because it transforms the decision from something that happens to you into something you actively shape and influence. By embracing the path you've chosen, you take control of your narrative, making each experience a building block rather than a stumbling block. The pressure to make the right choice often stems from perfectionism, a desire to avoid mistakes at all costs. However, perfectionism can be paralyzing and prevent you from moving forward. So recognizing that there are no wrong choices frees you from this trap and this loop. It allows you to move forward with confidence, knowing that whatever happens, you have the resilience to handle it and the capacity to grow from it. Ultimately, every choice leads you somewhere, even if it's not where you initially intended. Trusting that each path has value encourages you to embrace uncertainty and take steps forward with courage. The destination may change, but the journey is where life truly happens. 